everything's right. You roll the cam over and you watch them pass each other. 20th hour passed on the intake. You can put a dial indicator on them and watch them. I can do a buy eye now. I don't even need to think about it. That's that close. That is where that cam needs to be. All right. Um, when I, if you look at the timing marks when it lines up, it's so close to the factory, it's not funny. It's, um, it's so close, it's, it's very, very similar. Put the timing chain on now, um, like I showed Scooter before. This slack side, we undo these two bolts and make sure these slide, and we put the spring and the, the, the actuator in there. If you have a close look at here, you can see that I've offset the hole. I've got a file and I've gone in there and I've gave myself some adjustment. Because you're going to machine these surfaces, because you're going to run different gaskets, you need a little bit of movement on your, on your tensioners. So when you go to put them back together, you back them off. Back these off and you'll see how much adjustment we have. See how, much, how far that actually moves, just by slotting the holes, and that gives you a bit of movement to, to play with on the chain. So that this doesn't want to come all the way out. But this comes out too far on a lot of worn out old motors with a lot of wear, that can actually fall out. Um, it's because this hasn't got any adjustment. So you want to take a little bit up with this, and then this will look after itself. Quick handy hint for these. Obviously you can lube them all up and everything so they work. Um, cable tie. Another cable tie usually. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it without one for now. I'll give you one. Yeah, do a cable tie. This makes it easy to assemble. It's one of the best. Yeah, we do have the wooden wedge and all that sort of stuff as well. Get in there. We do have the wooden wedge and all that sort of stuff, which we'll use in a bit. Um, cable drop, cool. Get it, someone just told that this way. This one. Oh, <laughs> special. <laughs> Hopefully I've got enough room to do this. Mm -hmm. um, obviously you can't hold this all day, so you get a cable tie. And um, if you put a cable tie in there, it will slip out once you actually want it to slip out. Um, usually I use a lot smaller cable tie than this one, but... Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. If you wins the races, it's all because of me holding this <laughs> chain here. Mm -hmm. Probably fail first up. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should have lubed up that cable tie. Yeah. Okay, what you want to do is just make sure you've got it nice and tight so it's got nowhere to go. Obviously this is in the build, you can't do that in the car. Um, when you... Obviously if the cover's on you've just got to use the wedge. Um, which I do anyway. I've got a wedge here somewhere. I've got one sitting up there. Get a wedge around? I do have a wedge. Sure, I brought a heap more stuff, I don't know. Get um, <coughs> a rag or? Yeah, Looks like something you might hunt vampires with. <laughs> if I stab Scooter in the heart with it, he'll get really angry. Will he die? I'll turn him to ash, yes. So he's a demon, he's not actually. Okay. Um, just in case you guys want to know how you like put the wedge in, usually it's a hole at the top, usually have a bit of wire on it, so you can pull it back out. Um, that's the key thing. Um, if you wedge it in there nice and tight like that, the top's all easy to use. Try to make sure this side's tight, because that's the tight side. This is the loose side of your chain. So when we go to put the top in, which we'll do now, you can pull the cable tie out of the way and the wedge will hold it all anyway now. Um, depends which way. If, you don't need to use the wedge if you're tight in here. Some of them. 
fik fanget ved der, den er lidt topånd. Um, now, if you if to look at this in a traditional way, um, we've already fucked up. This is supposed to be at the top of the center place, which we sort of screwed up. Hold that. Put side tracks. <laughs> so how do you know it's top? It's <coughs> eight at the mark. Two. That's straight up. Okay. Twelve o'clock. That's the closest stuff is to swim. Yeah. Okay. Um, what they call them? A woodruff key. Yeah, the woodruff key is uh, yeah. straight up and down and um, twelve o'clock. Pretty wedging. You need to get about that bit. What the? There are no tires to line up in the chain. Oh, look. Doesn't make any difference. No, it's just the best one. We've got the top where it's supposed to go. The bottom is where it's supposed to go. Who cares where the chain is? As long as it's tight side this side, um, make sure that side's tight. Um, traditionally, what you'll find is that this would be up, and number six will be rocking. But because we've got an aftermarket camshaft, we want to know what number one's doing. It's upside down. But because it's six on we don't care. We know that's in the right timing position. It's firing on number. Um, Six at the moment, um, but it's dialed in for number one. Obviously, the camshaft's firing on the cylinder that's got full compression. It's compression number six at the moment, but we can't tell where the cam is. So we go to number one where it's rocking, and we find it there. Right, so it'll be downwards. It'll always be downwards in, in that position. Normal, you know, if we are doing a stocky, would be top, top, top on your on your points. Okay. What we find is because this has got a um, different gasket than the normal, I have to move the camshaft a little bit to get it to line up. to um, have someone just turn that slightly for me. I can do that. Yep. Just dial it back towards you. Towards me? Yep, towards you. <laughs> Slowly. Okay. Um. Yeah. I'm trying to. It's going to be a wobbly old movie, that's for sure. You know, yeah. make me hold up hold and do that. Alright. Now. Back a little? That's fine. Thank you, Steve. The bolt will go in. Now, <laughs> one thing that I haven't shown you, and it is actually wrong at the moment, the chain is on backwards. But for all intents and purposes, it doesn't matter. See the, um, that there? The, if it's spinning in that direction, you want the thing to be on the other side. You want it to be on the downside. So you don't have a situation where it can undo itself as it rotates. You want it to be always tightening itself. Okay, you can see that how it's got the open side at the top. Oh, yeah. Make sure that's going down if it's spinning that way. Yeah. Right. There's no issue with using a, a, a broken neck chain. Mm -hmm. I've never had one that had before. As long as you use an Elvis or a, a good Japanese chain, not a problem. Um, this is the problem if you're using the wedge, trying to get it out. If you it can be, this is a good wedge, came out, no worries. And uh, you can get that out as well. Holds it all together, it's not an issue. Um, now, because we've moved the cam and everything, we'll just tighten it up a little bit. I'll use a, a fiddle. Um, we'll just 
Just a little bit. Tighten it up just for shits and giggles. Yeah. When you're tensioning these up, you put a bit of Loctite on them and everything. Hold on to this with a shifter and tighten it up. You can use a, I, I do it by hand now, I just know what they feel like, but tension wrench it if you're not confident. Um, for all intents and purposes, it'll be tightened up, all right? Um, at this stage, if I want to dial a cam in and everything, um, I'll get this back up to exactly top dead center, and I'll have a look if I'm in my position that I want. Um, and it won't be because we've moved it around a bit. So we'll undo the front, and we'll be able to rotate the camshaft at top dead center to get it where I want it to be. Um, 